Hello, this is Richard White with a complete tutorial on how to buy and set up a Raspberry Pi. You may have heard of the Raspberry Pi. It's a small computer that's ideal for experimenting with Linux, constructing small electronics or computer projects, accessing the internet, and playing around with computers in general. One of the main features of the Raspberry Pi is its price, which is around $30 or $40 for the computer itself. There's a lot more that you'll need to get your Raspberry Pi up and running, although none of it is expensive, and a lot of it you may already have lying around, things like Ethernet cables or a USB mouse. This tutorial is going to take you through everything you need to know to get your Raspberry Pi assembled, get your operating system installed, and get you connected to the internet. There are a number of excellent guides for doing this available in print and online, so feel free to check those resources out if you're looking for a written step-by-step -step guide on how to accomplish these things. Let's get started. We're going to go over a list of all the equipment that you'll need to get started working on your Raspberry Pi. The Pi is an awesome little computer, but it only includes the microprocessor and a few ports for interacting with it. So if you want to experiment with the Pi, here's what you'll need. The Raspberry Pi doesn't come pre-configured with the software that you'll be using, so you'll be using your own Mac, Windows PC, or Linux machine to set up the Pi's SD memory card. We're going to need to copy information onto that SD card, so you'll need a computer with an SD card slot on it, or you'll need to use an SD card reader writer that you can plug into your computer. Obviously, you'll need to get a Raspberry Pi. There are a number of models available, and they differ in their speed, the amount of RAM they have, and the number of USB ports on the card. I'd recommend going to adafruit.com or makershed.com and taking a look at what they have available. For today's demonstration, I'm going to use one of the new models, a Raspberry Pi 2B that I ordered from Adafruit.com. The memory card will be used to hold your operating system and files on the solid state equivalent of a hard drive. Because you won't be running a full-sized operating system, it doesn't need to be a very large card. You can get by with 8 gigabytes just fine for most purposes, although I'm using a 32 gigabyte for my current Pi. The important thing is that the card you use should have a speed rating of class 10. Note that older models of the Raspberry Pi use a standard sized SD card, while the newer models use a micro SD card. Double check the specifications of your Pi to know which size card you need. Here's the one I'm using for this project, ordered from Amazon. You're going to need a power supply. All the Pis use 5 volt power supplies, and depending on which model, you'll want a power supply that can deliver 2 to 3 amps via the micro USB interface. I found this one at Amazon. It's got good reviews and it will work great for this machine. For first booting up the Raspberry Pi, you'll want to plug in a monitor. The Pi has an HDMI port, but I don't have an HDMI monitor, so I'm using an HDMI to VGA dongle and plugging it into a regular computer monitor right now. Once the Pi is up and running, most of the time I'll be running it headless. I'll just be using SSH on my laptop to connect to the Pi on my network. In that situation, I won't need to connect a monitor, or keyboard, or mouse to the Pi. I'll be running it from my laptop. If you want to use the Pi as a standalone computer, however, you'll end up using a monitor and keeping the keyboard and mouse connected to it all the time. This is just a regular USB keyboard that I'll be using to interact with the Pi during startup. I'll also need a USB mouse at first. Although it's possible to run the Pi using only a keyboard, it turns out that having a mouse is extremely useful for initial configuration. After I get the Raspberry Pi up and running, I'll use an Ethernet cable to connect it to a router so I can get on the Internet. Or you can try to get your Pi connected to the Internet using Wi-Fi. I have this USB wireless adapter that I'm going to use to get connected, although wireless connectivity on the Raspberry Pi can be tricky. If you can get away with using an Ethernet cable, that's better. The adapter that I'm using is this one, ordered from Amazon. The Pi ships in a static-proof envelope, and like all sensitive electronic equipment, it's easily damaged, either by random electrical accidents or overly aggressive plugging and unplugging. You should absolutely get a plastic case to protect your Pi. They're one of the best and most inexpensive ways of protecting your computer. Make sure you get a case that will fit your specific model of Raspberry Pi. I'm using this case that I ordered from Adafruit when I ordered the Raspberry Pi itself. The single most common challenge for many people is making sure their Raspberry Pi gets enough power. And the single best way to fix that problem is by using a powered USB hub for plugging in your peripherals. 
My new Pi has four USB ports available on the board, and I'm going to begin by just using those ports. That'll make what I'm showing you a little easier to see. Older Pis only have two USB ports, and USB-related power issues are very likely on those models. If you have any difficulties at all, your first troubleshooting step is to plug your USB devices into a powered USB hub and see if that fixes the problem. For my Raspberry Pi projects, I've used this one that is highly recommended on Amazon. Once you've ordered all the hardware, there's one thing more to do before you can get things up and running. We need an operating system to install on the Pi. There are actually a number of operating systems that you can put on the Pi, but we're going to use the most common one, an adaptation of the Debian Linux distribution called Raspbian. The easiest way to get this is as part of an installation package called Noobs, available from the raspberrypi.org website. I'm going to use my computer to download that package and install it on the SD card. Then I'll be able to use that card to run my Raspberry Pi. First, I'm going to go to raspberrypi.org to download the current Noobs package. I'm going to select the full installer, so I'll click on that and wait for it to download. Meanwhile, I'll take the SD card that I'm going to be using in the Raspberry Pi and get it set up. Here I need a micro SD card, so I'll put that into the larger adapter card and insert that into this USB adapter. I'm going to plug it into the port on my Mac, open up Disk Utility, and use Disk Utility to format the SD card as FAT. It was probably already set up that way if I got the card new, but this also has the effect of wiping the card clean, so I'm sure to be able to use all the space on this card for my Raspbian installation. Once Noobs has finished downloading, I'm going to open up my downloads directory and double click on the zip file to extract it. Now select all the contents of that folder and copy them over to the SD card. Here I'll just click drag them. Then eject that card from the machine. We'll now be able to use it to install the Raspbian operating system on our Raspberry Pi. We've done a lot of work in collecting the various materials that we need. Actually putting them together is easy. First I'm going to carefully remove the Raspberry Pi from its static free pouch and put it into the plastic case. This will protect the electronics and provide some structural support for the Pi. I'm going to plug in my monitor using the HDMI to VGA dongle here. Go ahead and turn the monitor on, although the computer isn't working just yet. The USB keyboard and mouse can be plugged into any two of the four USB ports. If you're working with the USB hub, you'll plug the keyboard, mouse, and Wi-Fi adapter into that hub, and the port's USB cable into your Pi. Now I'm going to plug the micro SD card into the slot. Be sure to plug it in so that the contacts are facing the right direction. Finally, when you're ready to get started, Plug the power supply into the wall and carefully insert the micro USB end of the power supply into the jack on the board. There is no on off switch for the Pi, so when you plug it in, the boot up process begins. There are different lights on the Raspberry Pi that indicate its status. The red light that comes on immediately indicates that there is power to the device. A single green LED that flashes during the startup process indicates that there is activity on the SD card. The monitor will show activity as the initial stages of booting occur. After a few moments, the monitor should display an initialization screen that we'll use to set up our initial installation. At the installation screen, select Raspbian by clicking the checkbox. If you're in the US, you should select English US for the language, which will auto-select Keyboard US. This is so your US keyboard will work correctly with the Raspberry Pi, which is manufactured in the UK. Finally, click the Install icon. In case you didn't realize it, this is going to completely wipe out whatever information was on the SD card before. Confirm by clicking Yes. For this first one-time installation process, it takes about 15 minutes or so for the Raspbian operating system to be extracted on the card and set up. During this time, you'll see progress updates on the screen. Note also that the default username on the device is Pi, the default password is Raspberry, and that the graphical user interface, or GUI, can be started from the command line interface by typing Start X. Once Raspbian has been installed on the SD card, you'll get a confirmation that the OS installed successfully. 
Click OK, and the Raspberry Pi will begin its normal boot up process. The Raspbian operating system is based on Linux, so you'll see a bunch of text information scroll by on the screen at this time. You'll see this information on the screen every time you boot up the Raspberry Pi. This text-based interface is called a command line interface, and when you're using this, you are restricted to viewing text in a terminal window and inputting commands via the keyboard only. This can be really useful, especially if you don't have a monitor hooked up to your Pi and you're interacting with it over a network. It's nice, though, to be able to work in a window environment, which is not the same thing as Microsoft's Windows operating system. There's a graphical interface that you can manipulate using a mouse and keyboard, and files and folders appear as symbolic icons on the screen, as they do in Apple's OS X and Microsoft's Windows operating systems. This first time that we're booting into the Raspberry Pi, we're going to establish some initial parameters. The first thing I'm going to do is change the password from the default, which is always a good security practice. The next thing I'm going to do is examine this option 3, Enable Boot to Desktop. The default is to boot to the command line, which is my preference, but if you'd like to automatically boot to the graphical desktop, this is where you would select that. Note that even if you select command line, you can always launch the window environment by entering Start X. And if you prefer to launch the desktop, you can always open up a command line interface using the terminal application. Arrow down and over to select Finish. We're done with our initial setup. You'll have the option to reboot now into your Raspberry Pi. Select Yes, and you'll see some text messages indicating that shutdown process. Booting up the Pi takes less than a minute, during which time you'll see the process documented on screen. At the login prompt, enter your login ID, Pi, and the new password that you just created. You'll get a brief login message and then a command prompt. Your Raspberry Pi is up and running. Let's take a look at the Pi's window environment by giving the command start X. You'll soon see the desktop appear. Here you've got a terminal icon in the menu bar that you can use to launch a command line. There's also a small web browser that you can use to connect to the internet. If we try to browse right now, we're not going to have much luck because we haven't yet gotten the Raspberry Pi online. Let's do that now. Take an Ethernet cable from your router and plug it into the Ethernet jack on the Raspberry Pi. Some Raspberry Pis have lights to indicate network activity. You can confirm that you've got a connection to the internet by launching a web browser and loading up your favorite web page. Even in the window environment, you can still use the terminal to perform tasks. Click on the terminal icon in the menu bar and you'll see a command line interface appear on the screen. For our first activity, we'll install the WICD Curses utility, which will allow us to easily set up wireless networking on our Pi. In the terminal type, sudo apt-get install wicd curses and hit enter. apt-get is Debian's package manager and this command instructs the Pi to locate the wicd curses software on the internet so that we can download it. Confirm that you want to continue by pressing Y and after a minute or so of activity and some setting up confirmation messages you'll eventually be given another prompt. If you'd like to set up your Pi to use a Wi-Fi internet connection, you'll need a wireless USB adapter. You'll now be able to configure the Pi to use that adapter by issuing the command WICD Curses in the terminal. You can end your Windows session by going to the menu bar to select Menu, Shutdown, Logout, which returns you to the command line mode. You can also completely shut down the Raspberry Pi from the menu bar by selecting Menu, Shutdown, Shutdown, or if you're at the command line, type sudo shutdown dash h now. To restart your Raspberry Pi, you'll need to carefully unplug the power supply from the Pi and then plug it back in again when you're ready to start it up. This is Richard White, and this has been a tutorial on buying and setting up a Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching.